Hello everybody, Peter of England bringing you an update. This update is on the previous video that I posted um, concerning the petition that I was encouraging people to come along and sign. Uh, it's been one of the most successful videos that I've put out in some time and so first of all I thank you uh, all for coming on, making the comments as you have um, and spreading the word. However, uh, most of you were a little, bit, or many, sorry, were confused by the fact that the petition disappeared. And change.org, um, the, uh, the platform on which I posted the, uh, the petition, uh, unilaterally decided to take it down. I've repeatedly emailed them and asked for reasons why, and they have not returned an email. And so I think, for all intents and purposes, to everybody out there who knows how the world's going to hell in a handbasket so quickly, we know quite obviously why they took it down, and they don't even have the decency to respond. Uh, all that you get when you look for possible reasons as to why videos were taken, uh, sorry, petitions might have been taken down, something to do with community guidelines. So what I would prefer to do in future, and this as part of the update, and it is something that I thought about uh, initially, but decided against it because I thought something as benign as a petition um, is only something that's lingering in the background. And the real reason for putting the petition together in the first place was really to corral or uh, inform people out there of what was going on in part and to get them to come together so that I could later communicate different ideas and intentions and directions to them so that we can uh, form a type of uh, fraternity, a consensus and a direction. So what I want to do now going forward is all of the people who watched the previous video about the disestablishment of the Church of England and the, the bill that is proposed in Parliament and it is, if we don't intervene, going to become an act. Um, as I said before and stressed, whether you believe in God, whether you believe in Jesus, whether you go to church or not, that isn't the point. This is, again, the uh, thin end of the wedge whereby each part of relevance within society has been chipped away, chipped away, and it's like demolishing a house brick by brick instead of hitting it with a wrecking ball. And it's genocide on any count. So for all of those people who watched the previous video, all those who are now uh, obviously getting notifications through and are subscribers, what I'd like you to do now is just do a simple thing. Go to a um, uh, an email or compose yourself an email. I'm going to give you the address right now and just write in the subject line I'm in or join whichever you prefer um, and just put your name in because obviously emails don't necessarily carry your name and we can't identify you. So I'd like you to send it to this email address. Make sure that you Note, it's services, not Freeman Legal Service. Yeah, makes all the difference. So spell it correctly, send it to me, and then what we will be able to do is inform you then directly as a, uh, should we say, an action group or an action event. Why it's important is um, it doesn't take me uh, to explain that the social order and the chaos worldwide, but more particularly on your front doorstep, is becoming exponentially worse. More and more events are transpiring on the day where they used to open up catastrophically, maybe only over a month or a year. Now you're getting more bad news, more fear-mongering and more um, um, collective um, how do we sort this out type of media mainstream commentary now in a week than before you would get in a year. And I want to try and explain to you the reasons for this. 
I think there are a lot of, and I've repeated this consistently in my videos, there are a lot of talking heads out there. There are a lot of um, YouTube creators that report it as it is and come up all mystified as to, well, what could possibly this mean? And they like to try and present that one side and the other, which is nothing more than a trap. It's the duality trap of classical indecision. If there is truth, if there are eternal verities, and I assure you that there are, then there is no left or right. What there has to be is an absolute down the middle. And what it is the duty of the mainstream media, particularly the BBC and ABC, CNN, Fox News, and all these other outlets to do is to give you both sides of the story. And why they do that is to deliberately confuse you. So now what we have is, oh, well, opinion. I've got this polarized opinion and my friend's got this other polarized opinion. And what it leads, is, uh, leads to is total chaos because nobody knows the truth anymore. Nobody knows what really should be happening. And let's not just say about your opinion or your neighbor's opinion, but we're looking at this from a higher evolutionary perspective. And believe me, if you think this is as good as the evolutionary scale or ladder is, then you are in one for a shock. And secondly, you really need to go and wash your head out with something. We are at a very, very primitive basic level. We're almost so far down on the evolutionary scale that the next stage would be back to primate, back into the seas and then lower. Um, so. What I'm trying to do is make it incontrovertible now that this channel, this channel for now in the foreseeable future is primarily taking a messianic, Christic turn. And the reason that is, is a message needs to be delivered and it's very difficult for you to find truth out there. So that's what I'm proposing that this is going to be a beacon. This is going to be a flashing light out there for as long as it can be um, allowed to remain, informing you of certain truths and certain things that are happening. Over the next few videos, what I'm going to cover, and so please, um, as I say, make sure you subscribe so you get the notification. And I think I've uh, heard on another channel that if I say smash the notification bell or button, then that triggers something on the algorithm and it gets promoted. I don't know. Never been a, a, a great pusher on these things before, but please circulate it and notify other people and make sure you get the, um, the, the, these videos directly notified to you. So what I'm going to cover over the, the coming few weeks, I'm going to try and do more frequent videos as things become more and more uh, prescient and more and more urgent. Um, I'm going to try and cover things like the woke agenda, this LBGT, this cancel culture, um, of which I am directly suffering from, and so too are you, with the taking down by change.org of the petition, and the fact that there's a, what's called a prorogation of parliament, prorogation of parliament at the moment, that means we can't rely on collecting signatures on um, petitions in the United Kingdom, until sometime after the, is it the 4th of July or the 6th of Ju July when Parliament reconvenes. So that is a non-starter. So the impetus has drained out of our petition balloon and we've got to start afresh. That's why it's important. That's why it's important to email admin, admin to at freemanlegalservices.com. So I want to cover the, the, um, the, the, the woke cancel culture LBGT type thing. I want to cover some things that were, I think they were introduced initially on March the 26th, 1991 by uh, what's called House Joint Resolution 104. And these were called the Noahide Laws. The Noahide Laws were uh, fundamentally uh, Talmudic or from the, those of the Jewish persuasion through an organization called the Lubavitch Movement. And the Lubavitch Movement were the, the driving uh, force uh, behind persuading, not that they needed much persuading, of um, um, uh, Bush Sr. 
to allow this uh, House joint resolution to be passed and put into the, uh, the Congress of the United States of America to reintroduce the seven Noahide laws. So, in short, these Noahide laws are laws that supposedly take precedence over all other laws on the planet, if you will. They're an old sort of Talmudic, biblical, uh, uh, should we say, vengeful father type God who will uh, punish his children if they behave in certain ways. And so I would suggest that you look that up. Um, that being said, it's no coincidence that, um, that the flag of um, this uh, Noahide law movement is actually a rainbow flag. And this is the reason that the LGBT, gen, transgender, all the politicians, all the local councils, all the senators and all the people in politics around the world, including Zelensky and everyone, are wearing this seven colored little rainbow uh, badge. It's nothing to do with the multicolored diversity of being a lesbian or a gay or a transgender moose or something that can't decide one way or another what sex it is. It's primarily because they are signaling to each other that this is where the laws are going. And it's very significant because what they're doing here is setting you up for a coup. They've already instigated it, it's something that's been in the planning for hundreds of years, if not thousands, and it's coming to a head. And for those who think it's of uh, no particular importance, what we, what we have, in effect, is we've got, biblically, Adam and Eve, and Adam and Eve gave birth to Cain, Abel, and Seth. Okay? Now, Cain slew Abel, and was banished, and was, uh, uh, as far as the Jewish component is concerned, was an, uh, an, an evil sort of uh, presence that had crept into some type of religion. Uh, in their, uh, in their, their text, they, they refer to that Satan had whispered into the ear of Eve, and this is how, um, in effect, Cain had uh, come into being. But if we move then from um, from Seth and the line or the lineage from, from Adam, there are ten, ten generations down to, um, to Noah. And from that point on, uh, Noah, also known as Zeusudra, I think the name, Zeusudra, that was the moment, according to the Talmudic and the Jewish um, religion, Orthodox Jewish as well, where God um, brought the flood down. And so the Noahide laws, named after Noah, was supposedly the covenant that was given to Noah by God, the Anunnaki God, who basically promised that he would never, ever destroy the earth again by flooding or water. Other means he could destroy it, but not with that one. So that's why going forward is very important for you to start to see how these pieces knit together. Okay, I've got a classical esoteric background. I know where these things come from. Whether you believe them or not isn't my concern and not my point. And I can see the comments already in that commentary box saying, no, you've got it all wrong, and no, that's not how it was, and everybody, as my father used to say, opinions are like our souls, everybody's got one. But we're not dealing with opinions here, we're dealing with facts and events that are unfolding before your very eyes, and you obviously don't know what they mean, or how to contest them, or contend with them, or else you would. This is why everyone is in a state of reaction and not action on the back foot, waiting for the next piece of bad news. So, why what I have done in the past from Weir Bank through to Removement, 
through Freeman Legal Services, through the Clausula Rebus 6 Stantibus, the urgency of not being defined as a person, why Area 52 at area52.life is a new ground which you need to explore as fast as your little fingers can tap it into the keyboard. Why that's important is it's going to get tighter and it's going to be more destructive and it's going to be more panicky. So this is not bad news I'm promoting, it's good news because with the knowledge you can feel a little bit freer and easier and you can, I assure you, get into a state of miracle-mindedness. Miracles can happen, it's a big universe out there, um, there are a lot of beings, whether you regard them as angels, whether you regard them as extra biological entities or extraterrestrials, meta-terrestrials, ultra-terrestrials, gestalt type beings beyond the, the metagalactic core. Whatever you define them as, they can help, but they cannot help you unless one, you try to help yourself and secondly, you ask, okay? So, it can be done, it should be done. I reiterate, this is now turning into more of a, um, uh, a religious drumbeat, a more Christic Jesuit, not of the Jesuit order, drumbeat than before. And that's why the videos are changing in nature. So I've already said I'm going to cover these Noah Hyde laws, which you need to know a little bit more about, because it's no, no coincidence that homosexuality, uh, adultery, um, taking the life of another is very, very... Uh, just wait. ...is very important as far as the Jewish Talmudic religion is concerned. Also, it prohibits blasphemy, and it might be very interesting to all those people listening in Scotland who might want to take exception in the, in the basic Scottish Reform Police Act, or whatever it's called, um, that's recently been passed, because in that hate law they've actually said that the, the offence of blasphemy has been re removed from the statute book which is now lying in direct contention. You've got two sets of contradictory law. What I want to stress as well in another video is I'm going to bring you back into this non-person uh, aspect. You have to opt out of the option in Article 6 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which says everybody has the right in law to be recognized as a person. Do you want that? I would suggest that you don't. Clausula rebus sextantibus, the next part of it will be a, another separate video showing you why you have now, because of the breach of the absolute trampling of the social, um, uh, the social contract that is supposedly in place between the government and you, or the king and you, or the president and you, that they say or promise they will look after and protect you from all enemies, internal and external, in return for the right to tax you. That's the deal. Once that social contract and other things, like allow you to have and conduct your own religious, religious beliefs as you see fit, to talk and express yourself as you see fit, as long as that was in place, then the dance could type of continue. But as you see now, they've openly and flagrantly, flagrantly trampled on all of that, and there is no rule of law. So if there is no rule of law anymore, it is time to invoke Clausula Rebus Sixtantibus and its ability, therefore, to override what's called Pacta Sunt Servanda. Promises must be kept. No, they do not have to be kept because they're only being kept by you and you're welded into adhesion contracts from the moment that you're born till the moment you, you, you die, from womb to tomb. So, this social contract has been breached. Um, the next video then I will do is this... I've got to be a little bit careful, perhaps, about CO2 and global warming, 15-minute cities... 
um, the ULES cameras, ultra low emissions that are being introduced in places like Munich and in Germany and uh, sorry, and in London and in Canada um, about Hamas and Gaza, the significance of what happened there. Um, SpaceX, Elon Musk's corporation there sending rockets into space, him then taking control of Twitter and then renaming Twitter X. So space X, Twitter becomes X. We've got this war ongoing between uh, Ukraine um, and Russia, what's going on there. So I want to try and pull it all together, then destroy a lot of the economic lies with facts about China being the new world economy engine driving us through into the next decade or whatever. Because outside of the main cities of maybe Shanghai uh, and Beijing, um, outside of those larger cities, most of the, 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 the people are poor. They haven't got a pot to piss in. They make about $350 a year. That's how poor they are. So the lie that China is an economic engine that is going to drag the world through to the next, the next millennium is a complete concoction. Like everything else that's being fed to you out there, it's almost everything is a lie. So what I want to emphasize and give to you is why is it happening? That's the biggie. Why? Yeah. And Who's behind it? Because nobody can believe that Zelensky is behind it, or Obama and the Clintons and Rishi Sunak and uh, uh, Trudeau, Macron. These people are pretty dumb. They're not very clued up, you know. They haven't, they're not the sharpest tool in the box, as you might say. The only reason they're there is because they follow orders, they're juiced in, and there's stuff on them. There's stuff on them, whether they've been involved in sexual malpractices, whether they've been compromised in situations that they don't want to have been compromised in, whether they've been gently sucked into the fish trap ever narrowing to then having them being recorded or videoed performing some type of satanic Luciferian ritual that they would not want anyone else to see. That is always the sword that's hanging over their head because if they step out of line, and this is something you might not realize, how does this control grid get, get um, policed so well? And that's the reason. There is no exception. There is no exclusion. You step out of line and try and go um, postal with it. You either end up compromised or dead or both. So those are the words I'd like to leave with you today. Please pass this around. I hope you find it interesting. The information that um, I'm putting out here um, is by definition quite uh, exotic. It isn't for everybody. As we go along though, um, it could become more relevant. Um, there is a very good possibility that Part of the disclosure project, which revolves around NASA and uh, Area 51, not to be confused with our Area 52, um, there's a possibility that that disclosure project might start picking up speed soon. Um, there are rumors that it might come out of Russia first. Um, my theory is if it does, it will be after they've done some type of false flag nuclear um, uh, construct uh, where all of a sudden um, we get some communication that our brothers from the stars need to come and save us from ourselves. And don't forget, uh, because I've mentioned it in videos in the past and I appreciate I've got new subscribers coming on, Werner von Braun, who was the, the grandfather and the architect of the space program uh, from Nazi Germany, who was working with the Zetas from uh, Zeta Reticulum in the Orion constellation, when they actually changed sides and moved over to the Allies and gave them the ability 
for Oppenheimer to put the Manhattan Project in and get the goodies faster than anyone else, Werner von Braun stated the last card we'll play, meaning the Illuminati or the people he was juiced in with, will be the ET-1. Yeah, so whatever he meant by that, um, it probably means the false flag, uh, Pearl Harbor type of event where they provoke something and we get saved by uh, our jailers with nicer keys and nicer bars. Okay, thank you very much and uh, don't forget to subscribe.